Hi everyone, I'm Ben, and this is the Board Game Blueprint. This week we're going to talk about a premium grab bag, yes. So we're going to go ahead and kind of open this sucker up and compare the contents between it and a regular grab bag that I have somewhere around. So check it out at the table next door, see what extra goodies are in this one, and we can just kind of talk maybe a little bit about the pros and cons, the costs and benefits between the two. So let's give it a look-see. So the first thing that I noticed is that this grab bag, this premium grab bag, is not purple like it is on the website. So that's an additional lottery uh, that you'll have to face about what color you'll receive. But, you know, this kind of matches my skin tone, so I'm okay with it. Now let's go ahead and pop this sucker open. And I do have the old uh, regular grab bag bag size to kind of look at the two next to each other. So it appears that this one is maybe a little bit narrower, but also possibly a little bit taller. So I do think it's going to be just as packed as any other regular grab bag, but with a couple more extra components. Like I can even see here, there's a printed meeple. So let's go ahead and open this sucker up, like I said earlier in the video, and see what it is that we have. So I don't think I'm going to be the next Tom Vassal, but looking around, we have a couple really cool pieces here. So as we saw uh, from earlier, yep, here's a custom printed vampire meeple, a la the custom printed, yeah, series that they, the Gagan Crafter started up uh, a couple months ago or so, I believe. We have a couple of these kind of like really fluorescent uh, clips, oops, there we go, back on camera. And these could be used probably just to clip maybe money together. Or for me, because of the coloration, I want to make them kind of like uh, spaceships or something. So maybe that's what I'll do with a little idea that I'll cook up for y'all at the very end of the video. We also have some pretty sweet uh, s like silhouette pieces. So I really like these ones. These could be like agents or spies, gangsters, um, different colors for different teams or players. And there's even also like an old school uh, getaway car maybe. So that could be really fun. I actually met up with a friend of mine in the city uh, who was wanting to do a game called Getaway, set kind of like the 1950s or so. So I might have to like give these over to him and let us see what he can come up with. These are also some new pieces that I haven't seen before. They're like little flowers, I want to call them. But I mean, it's up to your imagination, really. So kind of coming up with whatever you can for these nice round pieces. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm seeing color uh, flowers, I'm seeing clouds perhaps, um, maybe like some kind of cells in a body. That could be really neat too with all these different colors. Here we go, there's one more there. So maybe that'll feed into something else also. As per any grab bag, I really like those kind of, uh, not mutant pieces, but ones that come out a little maybe imperfect to some. And we have what looks like a double bar here of red. So that's pretty cool too. Can be a little fence or maybe uh, just some kind of wonky Tetris piece, you know? And let's see what else that's super special. We have some dice. This one, oh, well I thought it was blank, but it looks like it has a little kind of target laser etched onto it. That's pretty cool. We have this baby die, which is nice and marbled green, super tiny as well, so that's really cute. And then, of course, the end-all be-all for any premium grab bag is the metal pieces. So, just looking really quick over what we have in front of us, I think these are the three main metal pieces. I'll just go ahead and flip over some of this money just in case there's one more hiding. All right, and these are look like they're from Monopoly. So we got the thimble, the cowboy, and the uh, spinning wheel, I think, or I, not actually ever really sure what this was, but we have a couple, yeah, really nice pieces with heft to them. So that's pretty cool too. Just wanna look around last minute. Oh, we have another kind of there with the double color. We had domino and oh, this is pretty interesting too. I'm not exactly sure what this is at all. Um, maybe it's a, you know what? I do know what it is, I think. It's supposed to be a, maybe a coal car, but uh, I want it to be some kind of centipede. Yeah, little, little, little guy there. So we have a whole selection of things and of course the usual kind of discs. We got some cubes, we got some standees for the 
cutouts. Uh, this one is in clear, so if you have a custom card punch out, you can make this, uh, make it stand up with one of these bases and everything else that you can kind of see in front of you. So I'll try to go ahead and cook up a little bit of something before the end of the video and see what we can get. Oh, of course, also there's these dollar bills. Love money, make money. So I think I might have the very start of some kind of idea, and I'd love to hear if anyone wants to build off of it. But here we go. The players are playing, well, most of the players are playing as a team of either investigators or vampire hunters trying to eliminate, well, Dracula or a vampire in general, right? Uh, so we have all these different cards, uh, which we'll just say are different locations, maybe either in Transylvania or uh, maybe within uh, Dracula's castle, that players are going to be moving around on, sort of like a rondelle, uh, around the circle to collect uh, different cloves of garlic. So these are the player pieces, and these, the flowers, will be acting as cloves of garlic. So maybe it makes more sense thematically for this to be the surrounding area. Anyhow, maybe each player will start on one, and uh, they cannot jump to either uh, maybe a location that is currently occupied or to the next location of the same color. So you're always trying to collect a different type and maybe based on the rarities of these clovers, uh, cloves rather, uh, have different strength values. So what I didn't prepare is maybe recipe cards for different uh, garlic based attacks that players can kind of cash in recipe build, right? Um, but the other thing that I was thinking about for this kind of mechanic of the players moving around the board is that it would be a simultaneous reveal. So similar to uh, games like Sushi Go and other things, players will have maybe a hand of cards and each of them will reveal together at the same time, uh, flip it over face down, then flip it over face up to see if they all kind of meet up in the same place. I'd like to think that maybe they don't want to because if so, then Dracula, uh, maybe as, the play as a player or just as the game, will fly to that area and then can steal a heart from them. Uh, probably at some points, uh, players have health bars that they're trying to keep from being eliminated or turned to the vampire side, whereas Dracula is trying to collect them. Uh, but that is my general, general idea. Unfortunately, I didn't really think of a good way to use these awesome premium metal pieces. So if you have any ideas about how to incorporate them, maybe they're actually part of the cards as well, those location cards that allow players to move. And maybe each one of these would be an icon that represents a different action. So if Dracula uh, ends up in the same space as you and you have the cowboy, maybe you can run away to a next location, uh, an adjacent location. Uh, in clockwise, or in yes, in clockwise um, fashion. Maybe with the thimble, uh, you're safe from an attack by Dracula, and then whatever this is, I still think it's a gun, but I'm pretty sure it's not. Oop, there we go, back on camera. Uh, um, can be used for something else. Uh, pfft, but what that is, is evading me right now. So that's a quick little idea that I, yep, just kind of drafted up for you. Uh, we have so many other extra pieces as well, though, that I hadn't used. Um, so we have, right, like a little kind of yin-yang thing. Maybe this is a claw uh, for more recipe stuff. We have a coop. Uh, we did have a lot of chicken pieces, so I was thinking about maybe using those as the player pawns but uh, we're totally okay. I like this piece a lot, this translucent kind of, I don't think it's a Mancala bead, but it's something cool. Uh, maybe that can find some kind of good use and other discs and things as well. So oh, you're really limited again to your imagination. And I really hope that you pick up a premium grab bag for yourself at some point to come up with a game of your own from the components inside. Always a neat little exercise to get the juices flowing and uh, hopefully you'll come up with something Scary good. Rah. And so my personal takeaway is that they are very similar in the components that you get. We obviously saw a couple new ones, and I think that's just because of uh, the, the difference in time, the, the length of time between me getting my last grab bag and the new one. So kind of dumping an extra couple pieces inside that giant bin or whatever it is that they have, that they're scooping out and filling these up with. However, the fabric 
bag, uh, the felt bag is pretty nice, and I do like the metal components. It's always a plus. So it's up to you about whether you think that there's an, any extra additional value. I do want to say that the premium grab bag is bigger as well. So just want to reiterate that the size, the amount of components that you'll get is also a little bit larger, which means that statistically you'll come up with something even cooler inside there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so that you can stay up to date on future content like this. As always, I'm Ben. This has been another episode of the Board Game Blueprint. And together, let's build something great.